What's going on guys? I'm Tim with bleepinjeep.com. If you've been following along with Project Green Machine, I welded this truss to the 4 9 inch a couple of videos ago. Uh, be sure to check that out if you haven't seen it. Before this axle goes back in the Jeep, I will be adding disc brakes to it and that's what we are doing today. The disc brake kit that I am adding to this axle is available from Rough Stuff and it is specifically for the 4 9 inch. Let's take a look at the kit. All right, so this is what you get in the kit. Everything you see here and everything on my phone that you're looking at is right here on the table. So let's take a look at the actual stuff. These are the brackets that weld onto the axle that hold your uh, calipers in place to the rotors. And they, they use these same brackets on their custom housings that they make. So we're actually gonna end up cutting this off to fit the axle. And uh, they all come like this, so you're gonna have to fit that to your axle uh, one way or another. And one thing that I really like about Rough Stuff is they build, they make builder parts. You know, so they are not shy about cutting their stuff apart. If you have to cut this to fit your application, then cut it. Their stuff is meant for the custom builder, and because of that, they expect customization, and that is not a big deal. If you're able to weld this kit onto your axle, you are able to cut this. Super nice little bag of parts here. We have some banjo bolts, new brake lines, and these look like some tabs that we'll be welding to the axle to hold everything in place. Duralast rotors. Take those out of the bag here shortly. And then you get left and right calipers with this kit as well. These calipers are manufactured specifically for rough stuff. And this is what they look like. Pads included. All right, let's get to it. Now I've already stripped this axle down and I've removed the old drum brakes. So if you haven't done that on yours, you're gonna have to get it down to this point where you just take off the brakes, the drums, and the backing plate, and you're left with the flange itself. Uh, once you're at this point, the first thing to do is to bolt the rotor on uh, to the flange here so we can make sure that our alignment is gonna be spot on for a bracket. All right guys, check this out. So I just went to slide the rotor into place here. And I can see that the lug pattern is correct. But the inside of the rotor here does not fit over the flange. And sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Unfortunately, this is a case of the don'ts. But it's not a big deal. I have a simple solution. And it's this that varies from vehicle to vehicle over the years. So we've got a quick fix for that. Check it out. What I'm gonna do is take an angle grinder and sand the outside of that flange down until the rotor fits over it, nice and snug. And in order to do that and keep it perfectly symmetrical, I'm gonna stick this impact gun on the pinion nut and spin it real slowly. And that's gonna rotate the axles and I'll do that while sanding or maybe I'll have a second person do it uh, while sanding those down and that'll give it a nice uh, somewhat machined surface that should fit pretty good inside the new rotors. Look at that, that's some high precision machining right there. Let's see if we did it. Perfect. That is gonna work. All right, I'm gonna hit this little bit of paint to keep it from rusting, and we'll install these. Well, that was fun. All right, with everything sanded down and painted, let's slip these puppies into place. Nice and tight. And we're gonna tighten all these down with some lug nuts. Make sure everything's seated. Before we get too far, let's take a quick look at how this works. As you can see right here and here, this is the threaded portion of these rods. 
and as your, your pads wear out, this piston moves and the caliper can actually float a little bit on these rods to keep everything aligned. It'll kind of self-align on the rotor as things wear out just a little bit. And anyway, as I was saying, the threaded part right here on the rod is where the bracket goes to and that portion is going to thread in right here and the back right here. So just for the sake of the video, I'll take this out and thread those in just so you can get a good idea of what this is going to look like installed on the axle. Okay, so this is a rough idea of what this is going to look like on the axle except for it will be something like that and the axle tube is going to go right through here. So the next thing that I'm going to do to set this up is I'm going to cut the bracket open so I can slip it onto my axle and get that set up. After I do that, when this sits on the top of the axle tube right here, that is what will dictate the height of our caliper above the rotor. See if it fits. It's going to end up somewhere about in this region, right on top of this factory weld. So, not quite. Looks like we just need to relieve this corner on both sides with the sander a little bit. All right, I've made a few adjustments here. Looks like we are in the ballpark. That should be all right. Not exactly sure where this is going to go until I set it up with the caliper bolted to it, but it's going to be somewhere between here and here. All right, guys, so a couple days have gone by since the first half of the video. I ran into a little hang up with the kit from Rough Stuff and I talked to them in person. I didn't show it to you because I wanted to make sure that I had all the right parts before I, I decided that it was wrong. So I talked to them in person. They came over here to the shop and showed me uh, what was going on and they had a solution for the problem. And then I came up with my own fix. So let's get into it right now. So I was under the impression that the bracket was gonna weld away from the bearing cup out here on the tube. And after I got, those, got the ends trimmed off like you saw in the first half of the video, in order to keep those brackets square perpendicular to the axle tube, they ended up needing to sit on top of this bearing cup. I, personally, I didn't want to weld onto the bearing cup in fear that it may distort the inside and then the bearing wouldn't seat right. Would that happen? I, I don't know. I guess it depends how hot you weld it. But I didn't want to do that. And then the real issue with that is, it, well, it blocks your retaining bolts here too. That's kind of annoying. But the real issue is, if that's square on top of the bearing cup, then the brake pads inside the calipers actually sat above the rotor. So that was clearly not where they were meant to go. The kit I got for this axle is specific for this axle tube diameter. And it's clearly meant to go here. And once I actually had it and saw that it needed to sit on top of the bearing cup, it was obviously not meant for this size diameter. So what the bracket needed to do, in my opinion, was weld on in place over here, and then it would need a bend in it and go this way and then another bend 90 degrees perpendicular to here in order to sink the brake pads low enough to meet up on the rotor and then keep everything square because it basically well it basically looked like this and then the caliper was over like that and that is definitely not correct so this is what I came up with so I put these, few, these uh, two bends in each bracket and they actually both made up uh, really well they match each other just like a mirror and I, I used a, a little brake here at Rock and Road to bend, it, to bend them. I offset them about one inch. I decided that was probably enough. And I'll show you on the axle, but everything seems to fit pretty good. So now that the rotor is back in place, kind of get this on there. Give you an idea of where it's going. Now that I put that jog in there. All right, and what you also didn't see in the last half of the video, is I added a cap to the truss and a lot of you guys were asking about that in the truss video. Yes, I just capped that and I capped it with a, a piece of 3 8 
So this is 3 8 the bracket, the cap is 3 8 and I'll be able to burn that super hot. And this is obviously the back of the axle and you would know that if you watched the truss video. So this brake is going to go somewhere like that and you can see now that the pins are horizontal and I think you can see in there but the brake pads are actually sitting about an eighth inch below the top of the rotor and that's where I want them. And now I can weld both sides, the outside of the bracket and the inside. What I've done here is I've roughly jigged up the axle with the pinning angle set approximately where I think it's going to be. And based on that, I'll place the caliper um, appropriately. A really cool feature of Rough Stuff's brake caliper is that it has dual bleeders on it. So all you have to do, you can set, you can clock this any direction you want. And all you have to do is make sure that one of these air bleeders is above the piston. So you can either have it forward like that and it'll bleed just fine. Actually, it'll probably bleed fine right about there. Or you can have it like that. And also because of that, as far as I know, there is no left or right uh, limitation on these. Now, before you worry about deciding exactly where the bracket is gonna go on the axle, Greg from Rock and Road had a good tip about setting up brake calipers using a 16th of an inch spacer. So this is some stainless steel uh, welding rod. And what we're gonna do is slip it in between the bracket and the caliper on both sides. And then make sure that everything's nice and tight and that your pins are all the way secure. And what this is gonna do is allow for a little bit of space right here when we charge this brake to center it on the rotor. Due to varying widths and brake pads, this will allow for a little bit of flexibility and also once we have brand new pads set up on the rotor, they won't be rubbing the rotor until the pads wear down because they'll have a sixteenth of an inch space. Now that we have our sixteenth of an inch spacer in between the bracket and caliper, the next thing that we need to do is make sure that the caliper is level on the rotor. And to do that, um, I found these in the saw, they're just some eighth inch thick. Uh, pieces of metal, some drop that from somebody's project, and they are going to work really good. Right underneath there, they even have a nice little lip on them to hold them in place. And then we'll do this on both pins, this side and the front side. Make sure everything's down and that's going to keep everything level. Then we're going to charge, energize this caliper with air, and it's going to clamp itself onto the rotor self-centering which will align our bracket since our pins are tight bolting everything together and then we will decide exactly where we're going to put this and tack it in place you want to make sure your bleeders are tight and then we're just going to blast a little bit of compressed air inside this port you can kind of see the whole thing shift a little bit and what that did is it moved the inner pad over so it's as if it were braking. Now that that's clamped on the rotor, we just want to verify that the pin is nice and level to the rotor, which it looks like spaced off here with our eighth inch and have the same thing going on on the back. And now we can rotate this whole unit to the, uh, the desired location. Like I said, you can basically put this anywhere you want. I just want to make sure that I have either this bleeder or that bleeder above the piston so I don't have air trapped in my brakes when I bleed them. And that, that to me looks about good. And like I said, I'm just guesstimating on pinion angle. I think it'll be pretty close to that. Nothing too scientific here, obviously. Get that right there. Good hot tack. All right, same thing on the other side. All right, that's not going anywhere. I'll probably add a couple more tacks and then I'm going to pull this whole assembly off, remove the uh, caliper from the brake bracket, remove the rotor here so don't get any splatter on it. Add a couple more tacks and we'll weld this on repeat over there. 
Now that I have both brackets tacked in place, I'm gonna unbolt these retaining flanges and just pull the shafts out a little bit. So it looks like only one bolt won't come out all the way after putting this bracket on, but it's so close that I'm sure we can cut this bolt down just a little bit and it'll come in and out of there no problem. So that's no big deal. With the bearing at right here out of the way, uh, that'll give me enough room and I'll just leave that in place and weld that up. All right guys, so I have the whole axle reassembled. The shafts are back in place. The rotors are bolted up and the calipers are mounted to the new brackets. The next step is to hook up these soft lines to the caliper and they come with these nice little mounting tabs that you'll weld onto the axle. And that'll just house the end of the soft line where it mates up to the hard line. But as you can see, this axle does not have a hard line yet. Uh, and I'm just gonna hold off on this part until I have this underneath the vehicle. Um, because my leaf spring perch will also go right about here. So I want to make sure that I can route this appropriately um, given those circumstances. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. You will see more of this axle and more on the brake line portion of it when it's actually going underneath the Jeep. Uh, for now, I just need to hold off until I get to that, to that phase. So uh, be sure to check out roughstuffspecialties.com. They have disc brake conversions, both weld on and bolt on for this axle as well as several others and a full line of builder parts as well. So be sure to check them out, roughstuffspecialties.com. There is a link in the description below. Also, if you are not already, please subscribe to Bleepin' Jeep. We really appreciate it. And be sure to thumbs up, like, and comment below if you have any questions or anything to say. All right, guys, thanks. Stay tuned for the next video. I'll see you there, bye.